Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe Liss. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. Yeah, uh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, ah. folks, Mark's mid sip. Ah. What the fuck do you have there? It looks like a, a, a cap- lake in Houston. Cappuccino is Flint water. No, it's a cappuccino there. It's got a little, uh, it's free. We got a coffee maker in the lobby of this uh, law firm we're working in. But what'd you put in there? Water? It looks watery it's, it's and milky. It's a uh, milk in there. It's a little foam. The color, can we get a shot of this? I mean, it, the color is all wet. It looks terrible. I put some milk in. Yeah, but it looks like Katrina. watery milk or something. It's like brown, lake brown. It's not coffee brown. Mm. Don't you All think? Right. Ah, it tastes great. It it does the trick. I got no sleep last night, looks, so I need a little kick. It, it looks super. I, I saw you last night. I, I will tease, but we got something special going here. You might be noticing if you're watching on the camera. Yes. We're wearing cans. I know. Cans. Cans. It's weird. It's that a weird cans. look. Cans. We're in the studio. We're, we're, we're conforming. It's a little strange. No conform. No conform. No conform. Yeah. No, no, conform. no Bad form. I mean, you got, a, you got a yellow coffee, for God's sakes. What's less conforming than that? Good point. Uh, I'm wearing... You're dressed nice. You look like you're, you could nice. go out. I could, I could break down some drywall with this outfit. What are you talking well, about? Well, to me, you're dressed nice. That looks nice. That's an ensemble. I got gym horse shit. My pants. <laughs> my sneakers are dirty. I came from the gym. This is how they would dress the guy on the sitcom who just got fired. Or yeah. dumped. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah, I'm dumped and fired. You're depressed. You're like, ah, oh, she left me. And we have to, all your friends come over and we go, dude, you don't need her. She was fucking that black guy. I'm dressed like Piven in the audition in Seinfeld. That's right. Can we pull up that? Maybe we can put the video. We'll put the little thing next to it. But I think he's wearing yellow. Yellow polo and gray sweatpants. Yes. And he's like, blue. I'm picturing blue. I was picturing gray, but he comes and goes, what is this guy, like a loser? He's like a real loser. No, no, <laughs> not a loser. <laughs> Ah, um, so good. So good. We got well, so we're trying something different. We teased this the other day. Shelby got a wild dick up his ass and decided we're Sorry gonna about try that. <laughs> Couldn't help it. His ass was exposed. My father's gay. Oh, we got oh. some sound clips. Play it again. Hit him with it again. My father's gay. I mean, we got the clips. We're I'm trying. Like, oh, no. We're doing it one time only. We're doing only. it one only. O-T-O-T-O. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But yeah, just a couple clips. We say a lot. My father's gay. My father's gay. There you go. So we'll try. We're shock jocks. We're radio. Hey, it's uh, Queef Tits and, and Joe Blow in the morning. Yeah, and uh, so we're wearing, cam- by the way, the, a short cord here. If I move an inch, I'm going to rip down the whole sound system. Bad cord, no cord. Discord. We have something. I saw our finger. Shelby. It's all pipes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I get why they do it now. These shock queefs. It's fun because if you hit it at the right moment, bang, it comes. I mean, we got to re- really rely on the Shelby finger. My father's uh, gay. <laughs> all right. Well, we've got to go into repeats already, but I've never seen Shelby <laughs> smile this much, so that's got to mean something. He looks like uh, the piano player. He looks like Dizzy oh. Reed for Guns N' Roses. He's <laughs> over there with the headphones. His fingers or are going. Adrian Brody uh, and the pianist. Yeah, it's really something. Holocaust. I still love that film, but... Uh, what? I love it. It's just not Schindler's List. It's not as good. Well, it's not Schindler's List, but it's a different movie. That's all I need you to say. It's on the record. Check out uh, Joe and Rana on Talk Pianist versus Schindler's List. Oh. He thinks, he thinks Pianist is better. Uh, I, America Rhodes. Yeah, she's fun. Wonderful comedian and uh, a buddy, I feel like. We good had egg. one podcast. I feel like we're friends. But good, good Twitter, too. She messaged me and goes, hey, well, what, your friend's retarded. I, she didn't say retarded. I don't want to you know, make it seem like she says that word. But she, your friend's an idiot. She ah. This is amazing. She's like, I walked out of Pianist. So I made her put a comment on there. Oh, ah, she listens. She listened because she's. I think she just saw the the headline. Oh she yeah, she was first piano. She's like, I can't even believe anyone would debate this. But anyways, it's nice to have an attractive woman on your side, isn't it? It really is. Like whenever you tell me we got a hot female Tuesday, I'm like, we're doing something right. By the way, did you get that photo? She never no the photo. photo. I'm waiting for the photo. I sit by the phone, twirling the cord, <laughs> doing my hair. No photo. Help me out, sister. I just want to see that you're real. I'm not going to rub one out or go down on you. I just want to see the photo. Yeah, I think maybe she's not. I think sometimes people listen to enough that they know Tuesday. Right. So they'll say, Tuesday. and Because I've had it before when I was in Seattle and a guy was like, hey, a big Tuesday. I go, well, check this out. 
That's Derek. And yes. He's like, Derek, the, yes. let's see, the sound guy. Right. And I go, no, Derek, what are you talking about? I've had the same thing. I go, I'm a big twos guy. Hey, well, that's lunch. What are you talking about? It's dinner. <laughs> no, no, lunch. It's a, it's a thing I tried to do. Yes, it's all pipes and uh, they don't. <laughs> How I missed it. He's uh, talking something else. He's talking it's about. all pipes! Thank there you. Hopefully people... I wondered... People Googling this. We have a, a Tuesdays with Seinfeld on Twitter. Hopefully he's uh, keeping these people afloat on what the hell we're talking about half the time. I, I, I say it every week because I think about it every week. It's so fascinating to me, the people that never watch Seinfeld. And they're like, what the fuck are these guys talking about? You get a message every now and then going, hey, never heard about it before. I never heard of him or the show. I watched it. It's pretty good. You're like, pretty good! You never heard of it? What are you crazy? Never heard of corduroy. I got to talk about. I, I've, I've been laughing about it for days. I'm telling it as a story, and everyone goes, "I don't get it." But we had a real moment the other day. We did. We did. You missed it. But uh, we were at Chipotle, you, me, and Chuck. Oh, and I said, yeah. "I said, uh, you know, Yemen, pretty similar to semen." You went, hmm. <laughs> and it really made my my life complete. Because oh, I didn't know that. It felt very George and Jerry, very Larry, and you really you gave me exactly what I needed on that one. All Most people right. go Yemen semen. I don't get it, but you gave me a. Hmm. Oh, hi, like Mark. It. It's one word, one letter off, so I, I respect that. It's a perfect little jump. Yeah, it felt like a real Larry moment, and we love Larry. We love Jerry. Not what as is, much. But what is Yemen? I know nothing about Yemen. I think it's Eastern Africa. Ooh. I think it's over by Ethiopia. I didn't know that at all. I think. I mean, I, I don't know it for sure. But I, I think, think whitey, white people live there. In Yemen? I think it's whitey. I don't think so. Well, Barbara Streisand always saw, sang about Yemen. Yemen? Or she's in the movie Yemen, which I guess was in the 70s, and everybody was white in the 70s. I thought Yemen was like light skin brown Muslim. Call in I if think? you're in Yemen right now. I think. I could be wrong about that. I know that. There's Omen. There's that's Omen. A movie. That's yeah. a movie with Damien. That's a terrifying name. Lemon? Damien. Oh, yeah. Damien She's... Yemen. Oh! <laughs> that's something. Three people will appreciate that, but that is something. I think Damien Lemon's a twos gay. At least he no, used to be. He I... was. He was gay for a while. Give give him a goog. He's a fun cat. Oh, funny guy and handsome and just cool. Cool black. He's a cool... Wow, you didn't have to take it there. My God. Oh, sorry. sorry. White <laughs> folks is losing their mind. Hey. hey! What was that? Who's that? What's the uh, that, etymology of that one? Is that Aquafina? Shelby's uh, not mic'd. He doesn't like the mic. He doesn't, well, want, any, he doesn't it, want any hoopla. It's for the best. But, <laughs> but <yeah. Wow. laughs> I'm joking. A mic wouldn't be bad. A camera would end us. But, oh, God, or a mirror. Oh, he's got a hell of a hair swoop going. Right your now. hair looks great. Your jawline is chiseled. And uh, your shoulders are a little thin. But oh, It's all pipes. Yeah. Either way. Yemen, we got to go there. Maybe we'll do a live ep. <laughs> I think there's some trouble out there in the Middle East. A lot of trouble. The Middle East, very unstable. I'm listening to a hell of a podcast, uh, Barry Weiss's podcast. Honestly, it's a, I highly recommend. It. I think I recommend it to you. She's got Brett Easy. Stevens on there. Who's and, that? And he's a guy. He's always he's from the Times, and he's always on. Uh, Real time. Ah. And then he's got uh, Matt Taibbi from Rolling Stone. The bald, ugly guy. And they're debating Ukraine, Russia. And I'm so susceptible to debate. One talks for four minutes. And I'm like, well, this guy's 100% right. We don't want to be anywhere near Ukraine. (laughs) Fuck them. Let it fight it out. And the other guy's like, however. And then he speaks for four minutes. I'm like, that other guy's a retard. He doesn't know what he's talking. He's going to get us all killed. (laughs) I feel the same exact way. What is that? They're they're making convincing arguments. I got a soft brain. I thought about this years ago. With the horse and carriage in New York. Because mm. I was listening to some guy. He's like, what are you talking about? Fuck the animals. You have to have the clip-clop, the oh. proposals. It's part of the city, the spirit of the city. I'm like, you're right. And then someone else is like, they it's beat abuse. the horses. They fuck them in the ass. Yep. They, they make them eat donkeys. And the smell is horrible. Right, It's right. torture. And I'm like, ah, I don't know what to do. Maybe, yeah. maybe shoot half the horses and leave the other half to pull us around. But is that the definition of open-minded? You can take both sides in and see the good. It's like when you go into a, when you were younger and you go into a classroom and every lady was ugly, but you could see some beauty in one. Oh, I see the beauty in a lot of ugly. I want to fuck everyone now. Sure. I'm like, as, when it comes to women and sex, I, my, my mind is more open than my father's asshole on a Halloween evening. <laughs> <laughs> That's an asshole lantern. But yeah, I don't know what that meant. But uh, it's a big bag of candy. You want to give them a Tootsie Roll. But yeah, I'm with you. It's uh, it's exciting seeing 
the women's imperfections are, are fun now. When oh, you're yeah. a kid, you're like, give me the supermodel, give me the Pamela, whatever. But as an adult, you're like, oh, look at that uh, swastika on the neck and the C-section scar and the uh, the dingleberry. Yeah, exactly. Louis, Louis had that great bit that I think resulted in him getting divorced and famous at the same time. It's a trade. About the wife, her nipples all chewed yes. up, and she looks like an old black and white photo, and he thinks it's hot. And I, I remember watching it being like, eh, she can't enjoy this. And no. of course, they were divorced 10 minutes later, but it really got pretty successful. So it's a sliding scale, I guess. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a balance, but... Hold on, back to what you were saying there. The debates. The debates. I'm with you. I, I fly into Florida for a gig. I look around. I put on a MAGA hat and a Hawaiian shirt, and I kick a Mexican, and I punch a Cuban, and I'm like, woo, give me some bath salts. Shoot up that gay club. I love it. Yes. And then you go to L.A., and you're like, oh, shit, maybe I'll wear an AIDS ribbon and an I Voted sticker, and I'll give money to a Mexican, and uh, I'll join the, the DNC. Right. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's tricky. They're all making great points. Yeah, they you really know? are. Yeah. I well, mean, two uh, things can be right. We forget mm, that in America. Mm. Two things can be right. Two things can be wrong. Well, the middle path, as the Buddhists say, our neighbor here, is it's that the right? middle path, something in the, somewhere in the middle. But sometimes with these debates, you just go, ah, you figured out. And then you have that great relief where you're like, I'm a comedian. I don't have to figure it out. doesn't matter what I think. Right. So it's fun to think about, and you get overwhelmed being like, well, I don't know what to do in Ukraine. Then you're like, well, that works out, because I don't have a say anyways. Yeah, good point. Good point. So then you're just like, wow, that was good entertainment. I don't know what to think. And then you can bring, and then you force it into topics. You're yeah. Like, well, the thing is about the uh, Ukraine, they're not actually our allies. They're not in NATO. There you go. And then then you regurgitate. Go, yeah, you got to gurge. Yes, yes. Or purge. What is purging? Purge is when you go and you, you like like if we purge, we'd rip Shelby's clothes off, fuck him, take his money, kiss him on the lips. I think. Oh, that's different. I thought anorexics purged. No, the pur. Oh, maybe you're purging. Is there multiple purges? Because I thought the purge was like when you go crazy. Isn't that the movie? There's no rules for a day, oh, so you yeah. rape everybody. But what is the definition of a purge? I know what a perv is, and I know what a purse is, but what's a purge? Yeah. This is why you should be mic'd, Shelby. It's all pipes, I know that. But Give it a goog. I think purge means... Yeah, it's tough. I think there could be two purges. This throw-up purge? To get, get rid of. Get yeah, you rid purge of. everything. You oh. get rid of it, you, you wipe the slate anal. I, I think that's right. So you're purging the food, or you're purging society. Hmm. Hmm. Purge the food. So we could purge, yeah, we could get rid of his integrity. Yes. Purgis Meredith. Yes. Well, he's good. I want you to eat a stoplight and crap red, white, and blue. That eat my, lightning uh, and crap thunder. That's the one. Yeah. I don't know where I got mine. My... Boy, he's good. <laughs> he was good. He played the penguin as well. Yes, big penguin. <laughs> Burgess, I love the, the one of the great moments in the, the whole film, the masterful film, is when in the middle of his speech he goes, I want a manager. You understand that? It's a great moment of comedy. Yeah. He's doing this whole thing. He's like, you need a manager. I didn't have a manager. The reason I got taken advantage of because I didn't have a manager. And he stopped because he knows Rocky's dumb. And he's like, I want to be your manager. You understand what's going on here? It's very funny. I love that because management is so much jargon and, and bullshit and sugarcoating that at the end, he's just like, I'm a real guy. I'm just telling you straight up. Very beautiful. Lovely film. And, uh, don't you want to do that with ladies when you were, I don't know if you ever hit on girls in bars back in the day. I mean, you know, oh, yes. You know, back in the 80s. Of and course. And you'd go up and go, going to buy you a drink. And then you just want to go like, I think you're really pretty. I'd like to fuck your, your dad. Yeah, exactly. Well, I always love Woody in Annie Hall when he goes, let's just kiss. This way we can yes! digest our food. It won't be awkward yes. later. Let's just get out of the way. Okay, great. Now we can go eat. And that's like a lovely thing he did there. I know. And come on, ladies. You know what we're doing. We have to do this song and dance, the art of seduction. I know they like that. They like a little foreplay and a little uh, flirty bullshit, but... Come on, it's so phony. Let's get to it. Well, isn't that the old adage that was in the Bible that women know if they want to fuck a guy within 10 minutes? Remember I've that? heard that. I've yeah. heard that. Yeah, I don't believe it. You can swip it and swap it. I think men are like that for sure. Well, we want to fuck most everybody. Yeah. And we can swing. I could be absolutely not and then start to be like, you know what? Maybe I do want to fuck her. Of course. Because you see her, she's got a mustache and right. like a, uh, what's the thing? The, a mole? A, a mole on her eyeball. With a little hair in it. Yeah, and you're like, oh, yikes. And then, you know, she makes a couple jokes and slips and falls and you go, ah, I could make love to her. Yeah, and I'm, and I hate to get into 80s comedy here, but I'm the exact opposite of a lady. Like if a guy goes up to a woman and goes, I'd love to fuck you. The woman's like, whoa, who's this psycho? A little forward, huh? Jeez, take it down a peg, you weirdo. And I'm like, 
if a girl comes up to me and she's horrific looking in a wheelchair and goes, I want to fuck you, I think she's hotter. Because yes. she's open, she's honest, she's cool, we don't have to do all the bullshit, oh, what are you, what are you, Virgo? Yes, very aggressive, is nice. Well, I had a woman, I've probably told the story before somewhere, but 4th of July, 2003... No, 2002. I was 20 years old, mm. and I was in Charleston, South Carolina. Maybe I haven't told this story. Oh, little old fatty. school story. Play, bring so it. Derek, who the gays know, Big D, Big D, D man. Oh yeah, Dare Bear. So he's down in Charleston. He's like stationed in. He's a merchant marine. They send him places. So he's down in Charleston, South Carolina, mm. and this is way back in the day. And oh, maybe it was. I must have been under. I'll figure out the age later. When did I turn 21? Oh, God. Oh, boy. 2003. This story stinks. So it must have been July 20, 2002 or whatever the fuck okay. you say. So I want to go to Charleston. He's like, come on down. We'll party. He's got a roommate, Seamus. They both rip Seamus, it up. Party. Wow. You know, fresh out of college, you know, merchant marine, drunk, crazy. So I go, I'll head down there. But at the time, you're young. I'm, I'm, I'm into Simon and Garfunkel and Kerouac. I'm one of those assholes, you know. So I'm like, I'll take a bus. Because yeah. a plane is expensive and at the time, and, and it was post-9-11 and all that horse shit. So I was like, why don't I take a bus? To Charlestown? I know. Charleston. Charleston. Charlestown. Charlestown. Is close. Like 10 minutes, yeah. That's an easy bus. So I got a dangerous bus, but still. Sure. So I go, I'll take a bus. It'll be romantic. It'll be like, you know, Midnight Cowboy. It'll yes. be, I'll see the country, because I was in that Wow, 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 wow. I'm going where the weather suits my clothes. So I, I just think <laughs> hey, this will be nice. I've gone off to look for America, and I'm like, that's what I'll do. And everyone Hell goes, yeah. you're crazy. What are you insane? I go, fuck it. It'll be fun. You don't know. You don't know me. I'm America. I'm going to go find the soul and the spirit of America, like one of those bullshit journalists, whatever. Yeah, choo-choo. Well, that's a train. So, well, whatever. There so it is. I get a bus. You're a bus boy. 22-hour bus ride. Wow! Each way. What are you thinking, Fatty? Get a bullet train or a, a prop plane or a canoe. Well, it was cheaper. It was like a hundred bucks or okay. whatever. And I really thought it'd be an experience. So I packed like a remember the stack of CD, the CD case where it's like four on each sleeve. Yes, yes. So you, it's like a whole book. I had that and just bags of batteries. Most of my luggage was batteries because I had a disc man. Batteries. Disc man. Ah. And that disc man would eat it's batteries. All pipes. It would eat batteries. Yes. So, <laughs> you were purging batteries. There was no pod. What's that thing? The iPod. iPod. There was yes. no iPod. iPod Ukraine. Every time I see the finger, I think something's coming. That's the problem with it. That's what Joe, she said. trust me on this. Hey. Hey. Kytel. Kytel. Does Kytel remind you of Colin? I, every time I see Claire, uh, yeah. they, they look very similar. Well, they're Brooklyn guy. You're going to be okay. Say the goddamn words. <laughs> <laughs> um, These kids today, they got no idea what the hell we're talking about. And they're missing out. This is similar. great great I, entertainment. Is Kytel Bronx? He might be Bronx. Nah, Brooklyn. Are you sure? Bensonhurst. Wow. I got a real knack on where people are from. Give me another celebrity real quick. Was he born in the Bronx? I feel I, I visualize Bronx with Kytel. Stanley Kubrick was Bronx. Right. Robert Klein was Bronx. Robert Klein. Uh, Don't forget uh, Shapiro. Oh, is he Bronx? Oh, this is the music. This is the we're looking for something music. <laughs> this is like in a bad video game where I'm looking through the warehouse with my gun. They're so they're so similar to me. They look similar. They're both you know specifically it just says New York City. Bensonhurst, I'm pushing for it. Early life, born in New York City. Come on, baby. Uh oh. Grew up in Brighton Beach. Okay. We'll give it to you. We'll okay. give it to you. Yeah, it's it's very close still. neighbors. He grew up in Brighton Beach. I thought maybe born in Bronx for some reason. I don't know why I had He's Bronx. Tough. As his He's tough. He's a tough guy. Because it's all it was all whites in the Bronx of back course. in the day. And 50s. Jews. Well, I don't, I don't count them. Oh, I see. Oh boy. Well, you know, not pure. White folks is losing their mind. Thank you. All right, that's Shelby on the twos and threes. Get a Whoopi Goldberg Jew drop if you can. Ah, jeez. <laughs> all right. Well, we got to mix it up. We got to. We got to whites. We got to. All right. Jew drop sounds like a good candy. Uh, <laughs> Give me a Jew drop. That sounds really good. There's a Juju B and a lemon drop. Yes. Combine those Jews. I like that. 
Hey, hey, folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Well, you got to get on the BetterHelp Online Therapy. BetterHelp assesses your needs and matches you with your own licensed professional therapist. You'll be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's a self-help It's professional therapy done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise available which may not be locally available in many areas. Available worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. Schedule weekly video or phone sessions. No waiting room. BetterHelp is committed. BetterHelp is committed to great matches, so they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's more affordable than traditional online therapy. Financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life. We're both in therapy. You got to do it. It's good for you. Clean out the garbage. Talk to somebody. Get the feelings together. Tell them how to do it, Fatty. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. That's Better H-E-L-P. And join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Special offer for Tuesdays. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. Do it today. Yeah. Okay. Tuesdays with Stories is sponsored by Liquid IV. If you're thinking about getting that summer body ready for beach season, you'll want to meet your next workout at Workout Buddy. Liquid IV. They sent me about eight gallons of this stuff. I drink a couple every day. I like the booze. I like to hit the sauce. So I like to get my hydration back. And this is the best stuff for it. It tastes good. It feels good. Doctors use it. Nurses use it. It's good stuff. Get those electrolytes in you. Start feeling better with flavors like watermelon, lemon, lime, strawberry, pina colada. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. Made with premium ingredients. It's vegan, non-GMO, free of gluten, dairy, and soy, and they're supporting frontline workers to stay healthy. Liquid IV is donated to hospitals, EMS, food banks, veterans, and active military. Over 19 million servings donated so far. And just for the gays, grab Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TUESDAYS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use promo code TUESDAYS at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today at liquidiv.com, promo code TUESDAYS. Hell yeah. Back to the show. Okay, so you're on the bus for 30 years going to South Carolina. 22 hours, and the first leg is to New York, and I get to I go all the way to New York, and it's exciting. You see the skyline, and you're like, wow, I'm getting there. Yes. So you got to transfer in New York, Penn Station, and I go, whew, I'm a little pooped. This is a long bus trip. I'm only in New York. I'm four right. hours in. I'm like, I'm like uh, 200 miles from my house. Then you switch there. Then you go down to, like, D.C. You switch again. Then you take a bus. Then you get into, like, the deep south. Oh, yeah. Bus stops. And these stops are, like, on, like, rural roads. Like just back, It's just, like, houses. And, and you see a lot of, like, the poor folk. And this bus changes over. And I remember feeling like there was, like, an old black woman. And I was the only white person on the bus in, like, South Carolina, in the Carolinas. Yeah. And there was a black woman getting off. And I, she's like, you go ahead. And I was like, no, you go. And she's like, oh, Oh, thank you, boy. Thank you very much. Like, I wow. felt like I was like in the 50s. Like, I shared a ice cream with a black person. Right, right. There is a lot of that still, that slavery, uh, what's the word, remnants. Yeah, I mean, she acted like I had just handed her $1,000. She's like, oh, my God, thank you very much. Yeah. And I was like, no problem. It was very strange, but it was kind of nice. I felt like a hero. Sure, sure. I was like, everybody go. Right. I don't care. You take the front of the bus, Rosa. It was, it was really like her reaction felt... Straight. It felt like I'd gone back in time. Yeah, there's a lot of that there. And it's it's so rural there that it hasn't gotten as progressed because there's not as many people to push for it. There's not any skyscrapers or anything. So it's just the same shit over and over. It's like the 40s. Yeah, it was wild. And uh, so 22 hours, which feels like three days because... Mm-hmm. 
you're only awake for 14 hours in a day or whatever. Sure. And it went from like night to all the way day, all the way night, and then morning again. It was crazy. Did you at least have an open seat with you, or was it jammed? A couple times I had open seats. Towards the south, it was pretty open. Okay. But still upright. I mean, like, you're upright for 22 hours, and you're trying to sleep and talk. Yeah. And I'm like, this is awful. Awful. Back hurts. And then you'd have, like, one of those stops in Bumble Tits, North Carolina. Sure. And there's, like, a 50-minute layover. Uh. But you can't really go with there's nothing there. No. It's not like a it's not like Penn Station or what do you call it? Uh what is this? Port uh, Authority. Uh, yeah. Where it's uh, like McDonald's and the New York Times building and all this shit. You're just like in the side of a row with the cars like I know. And then you get out and you do a little one of these mm-hmm. uh, and then you gotta go, Oh, where, where what are you up to? Oh, oh, you're going to a family reunion. Get out of town. How about that, huh? Yes, and you're just running out of seed. The cans are killing me. I hate the cans. I hate a can. So they're just. Uh, it's all pipes! <laughs> so just sitting there. I'm dying. Finally, I get there. It's like 7 in the morning, and Derek's at work, and he left me a fun Shawshank note. He's like, uh, if you've come this far, maybe you're willing to come a little farther. And it was really exciting. I he like it. it. Randall Stevens or whatever bullshit. Good, good uh, motto for a porn star. Peter North. If you've come this far, ah. you can probably come a little further. Like, if you get to the tits, hit the face. Yes, I'd love coming my face. Just the warmth is well, all I want. we got some time. My father's gay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need, we, I think we've circulated about three. I think we got to mix it up a little, huh? I know. Well, we didn't get a lot of the classics. We wanted where the camera is. We wanted cans. Yeah. We wanted... Uh, George is saying cut George it. George is saying cut it, but, uh, you know... Joe, trust me on this. <laughs> it's hard. To, it's <laughs> it's, hard. it's the third. It's hard to do. We got a reservoir dog. All right, all right. Unexpected. Sure. Um, so I get there, and then they're at work. So I, I get the key under the door. I go in. I nap, and then they come home. And now it's the feeling of like they're at work, knowing they got a buddy. And I was a fucking maniac. Then. Yeah, you were a maniac. I mean, this is like he's a maniac. Twenty year old just discovered drinking. I'm a wild animal. Now I've been on a bus. So I'm like a caged animal. They just yeah. let go. So we go out. I don't even know what story I'm telling. It was in Charleston. Yeah, you're going on the bus. You're 20 years old. You're... Oh, I remember the story. We so got it. We go out, and we go. It's 4th of July now. And you know me. I was the karaoke king Ooh, back in the got, day. You got laid off of it. When I was the youth. So I had a fake ID, Joseph Michael Arnold, wherever you are, Joe. Thank you. JMA. From Columbia, South Carolina. That was me. Columbia. No one's going to question that. Well, it was a real idea. I ran into a problem in Boston. I brought it back to Boston. Uh Uh-oh. And I would show up with like a Sox hat and a Bruin shirt and be like, hey, we're just going to grab a couple pops at the bar. Right. And the guy's like, from Columbia, huh? And I'm like, ah, shit. Yeah, he got you there. Uh, This this was a bad idea. (laughs) I get busted saying idea, adding ours, dropping ours. Right. I'm like a vodka and uh, cream or whatever the fuck. (laughs) So any tits. Should have asked for a sweet tea. Blend in. It worked there. So I went down to South Carolina. They they don't give a shit down there. Because as we said, these red states, they don't care about anything. Oh, no. It's the wild east. Yes. Southeast. Middle East. So, Gamecocks. So they look at the idea. They go, go ahead. And we go into the bar and karaoke's going. It's fine. We're meeting girls. Derek had a hot girlfriend back in the day. He's one of these guys that always has hot women. Yeah, because he's not a, a stunner. He's pretty handsome, though, when you look at He looks like Sinatra. Is that right? Yeah, well, you got to get see the young Derek. I, you Maybe know, Sinatra we've, now. We've all aged, but he's got a real right. face. I'm telling you, he used to get the hottest chicks on earth. Nothing against the the D-man. I'm just saying. I've, I've run into the cat a few times, and he's not a showstopper. He's a, he's a classically good-looking guy, I guess, but I wouldn't say he's a... He's a, uh, what's his name? Tom Hardy. This is 20 years ago. Okay, okay. Oh, now good point. he's a good pile point. of shit. Don't yeah. get me wrong. He All stinks right. now, but 20 years ago, he was something. Primo. I'll give you that. Send I me mean, a photo, Derek. His dame was like, hot. Really? Yeah. Well, oh, that's, yeah. That's another thing. Down south, I feel like you're gonna, you can clean up a little harder because up here, there's a competition up the India. You got these finance guys. You're trying to bang Fallon's wife up here. Down there, it's Cletus. And you got to remember, too, he's stationed from out of town. He's a Boston guy. He's a merchant marine. He's got dress oh, whites. Oh, merchant marine. He's in dress marine. whites. Dress whites. And he's got the gig. He's got a job. And then so you have the merchant marine have a nice thing because they have like a military aspect. They're in a uniform. Yes. But they're also like, I'm down in the docks. It's the shipping. They're in the shipping industry. It's a good mix of, of 
polite gentleman, uh, straight and narrow with manly and, and rugged. Yes. Plus, he's funny. We know how far funny can get us. Funny's big. He's funny. And, uh, and the, 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 what is it? The, the whites? Dress whites. Dress whites only. Yes. So he's got that going on. Anyways, hot girlfriend. We tour Charleston, which is beautiful. And there's all the slave shit there, which is oh, crazy. Oh, yeah. A lot of slave. People are, uh, they don't like that. But it's pretty neat when you see it. Yeah, and it's got to be tough for the uh, the black folk because they're just seeing that slave shit all day, every day. You know, we 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 tear down a statue of uh, Thomas Edison because oh, he said the n word on a podcast. But back there, it's like right there. They're like, this is the mall. I mean, it's crazy because like I go to Fenway Park and I'm like, wow, someone was sitting here when Ted Williams hit a home run. Yeah, and they're there going, ah, someone got bought right here. Yeah, so you know, yikes. Boo. White folks yeah. is losing their mind. Look, I'm from Louisiana. We have all these slave like plaques. Like this is the biggest slave trade in America, right here. And over here, it's where they, uh, you know, bred them. And over here is where they fed them. And over here is where they did the haircuts or whatever. It's it's a lot. Bread slaves. Yes, I'm off bread. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, been, hi, Mark. That would have been a good one too. I'm off bread. You're off bread. Uh, <laughs> um. So, any tits, we go to the bar, and it's 4th of July, and it's, and it's just festive, because the South, they like love America and sure. whatever bullshit, so it's all exciting, everyone's red, white, and blue, the whole thing, and I put in my thing, I'm going to sing Born to Run, 4th of July, and so I go out, they go, let's have Joe Liss come up, and you know, I'm an unassuming nerd, I'm gangly, I'm uglier than I am now, even if you can imagine, and I go up there, and it goes... And I'm jumping up on the wall. I climbed up on the thing. I got on the speakers like fucking Eddie Vedder. I'm yeah. jumping. I took my shirt off. I whip it into the Woo! crowd. I mean, this place went bananas. Yeah. You can't even believe it. Still the highlight of my life. And it was like a there was like a it was like an L shaped wall, like half wall, like yeah. here. Over here and here. So there's people are like dangling over. So I'm like running around, high fiving everybody. I'm climbing the wall. And the place just went. Nuts! Everyone's going ah, wow. beer. Baby, we, whoa, whoa! I got every single person going, and they're spraying everything. It was wild. And then this woman walks up to me after, cute as pie, little thick Southern thickness. All right, we like the uh, biscuits and gravy, but cute and hot. And her name was Joey. Ah, I like that. And she walked up and said, "I don't care what you say. I'm going home with you." Wow, that's a little rapey. And I said, well, that's fine by me. Let's yeah. go home together. We went to the bar and shots and beer. Shot, shot, shots. The whole thing. We're making out at the bar. Wow. All this shit. Yeah. I don't want to tell the ending, though. Uh-oh. How was the thick uh, thick sex? Well, I blew it. I was so insecure in ah, those days. Jojo, I got drunk. Rabbit. And then I couldn't find my friends. And I was like, I got to find my buddies. And they had left or smoked. Because back in the day, there's no cell phones. Right. So I had to go find them. By the time I found them, I couldn't find them. And I remember being mad. I remember being like, you guys fucked me. And they were like, we thought you were going off yes. to Joey's house. Yeah, Joey, the kangaroo. But I have this thing. If I can, it's like a uh, job interview where you're like, what's your biggest flaw? And you say something nice. Yeah. I love my fr- I have loyalty to these friends, and I-, I wanted to be with them. I didn't want to just blow them uh, off. So well, you, I, yeah, the bus ride you, you showed for them. They were like in that time. They f- I never fucked that off. They fucked all the time. Right. So they'd be like, "We just left you. You had Joey," and I was like, "I, I had to find you." And they're like, "All right, let me go find Joey." And by the time I got back, she probably thought I hated her and left. Right, of course, she's getting diddled by a piano leg at her apartment with a vibrator. Never fucked Joey. So if anyone knows Joey in South Carolina, there can't be too many Joeys down there. Nah, I guess not. She would look thick. She'd be about 58 by now and 300 pounds. <laughs> and you could play that song and see if she reacts to it. She might come a-running like a dog whistle. So but I, I didn't get to see Joey, but the point is... She said that. Flipped would yes. be something if I was like, hey, I don't care what you say. I'm going to fuck your brains out tonight. I think I'd get you know kicked out of society. Oh, yeah, that's a crime. And uh, it makes you wonder, what could you have said? I'm married. I don't care. I'm gay. I don't care. Right. I'm a pedophile. I don't care. Here's the N-word. I don't care. Like, where could you go to see what she would do? Because she said, I don't care what you say. Yes. So it'd be a fun little game to actually test that. My father's gay. Yes. My father's gay. There uh, it is. Um, Joe, trust me on this. So anyways, <laughs> that's how the story ends. But I've been thinking about this a lot lately. And I got more stories, but I don't want a hog here. Hog, put, put a hog on me. I, 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 there was so many times that people wanted to have sex with me, and I just didn't pick up the signal because I had no 
confidence. Yeah, well, it's also we've been beaten in like, hey, don't be aggressive with ladies. Don't take advantage of ladies. And then so when a lady's all over you, you're like, there's no way. Plus, you hit on girls your whole life. They all turn you down. They call you ugly and gangly and tall and toothy. Five head. Ouch. So, you know, you assume if a woman's talking to you, she doesn't mean it. Yes. I had the same thing. Yeah, I was very insecure. There was another time where there was this woman that I'm still friends with that I went to New York Film Academy together. Yep. As you do. And we were both in love with each other, I think. We were best friends. We were just buddies. And we, we talked and laughed. And I was like, God, I love this woman. But she had a boyfriend. Mm. But a boyfriend she was never around, didn't talk about him. He was like back home boyfriend. And she was never like, I love him, I miss him, whatever. Never mentioned that. Just I knew it, and then our third friend was like, "If it weren't for that boyfriend, you guys would be together. You guys should be together." Wow! Then towards the end, we saw Lost in Translation, sure, the film, wonderful film, and that after we saw it, she goes, "Boy, I just love that they kissed at the end. That was really perfect." Uh-huh. And then I was like, "Yeah, me too." Yeah. All right. Uh-huh. I'll see you later. And looking back, I'm like, "You fucking." Idiot. You flew it. You idiot. You I mean, and it was it. the same relationship. They were in relationships. They didn't care about this stuff together. And of course, they broke up like a month later, her and wow. this guy. And she was just looking up. At, she was little. She was looking up at me. I love that they kissed. I was like, ah. yeah, no, it was great. Wow. And I should have planted one on her, but I had my parents fuck me. Yeah, yeah, the insecurity. You can't imagine that. And the ladies in all the movies, they like the guy to grab and pit him. Not, I know. You know, like do the, 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 the dip. dip. The mm-hmm. dip. And then the smooch, and it's so romantic, and uh, you were the exact opposite of that. I was a dipshit. I, it, was, oh, it sucked. I had a thing at Film Academy as well. There was a woman there named Maga Lee. She was Swiss Ooh. French. Maga. Yeah, Lee. And uh, she was beautiful, beautiful uh, Swiss French. So she's Swiss from French. Switzerland, and they speak French there. Wow. So she, she must be- have loved cheese. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big cheese head. <laughs> and she was like, oh, Mark, how you doing, Mark? You know, she was so sexy and French and, like, swarthy and smooth. You know, she was hairy. Wow. And I had the biggest crush on her, but I couldn't think of a word. I'd be cutting up all day in class, and she would show up, and I would just froze. I was frozen. Uh. And... So one time we got a little alone time. We're at a bar, and I'm kind of acting like a human being. And she, I don't buy it. I know. Well, she was going in for some kind of flirty thing, and I, I could, you know, when you're saying horrible shit, but you can still feel it. Mm. I felt the connection. I felt like we're something's cooking here. You get a little bit of a, a chub. Sure, I love know? a chub, Nick Chub. Nothing is said, but you feel the chub. You feel the connection. You feel the warmth, the love, and I, I panicked, and I, I couldn't take all the feelings, and I go. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, I think I farted. And, and she goes, I didn't know, I'm a child. And she goes, ah, you Americans with the humor, bad humor. And I was like, ah! And I was just, I was ruined. Oh, and geez. she was right. It was a bad joke, but it was all out of just uncomfortableness. And she was like, ah, you're, you're piece of shit and you're not funny. Oh, it's rough. You go, you look back and it's just like, Fucking A, man. But everything worked out yeah, here. We're doing yeah. well. We like our wives or whatever. And sure. here we are. We're, we're making get, money. We're, we're getting gay. laid. Yeah, so whatever. It's all pipes. But who gives a shit? But man. It's all pipes. Back in the day. Now, I mean, I got more. This is like, uh, the same woman, the Lost in Translation woman. Later, Derek was now living in Long Beach, California. Mm. Again, the shipping. LBC. And, what's that? The LBC. Yes. So I was going there, flying there, and my friend, this woman, she lived in L.A. She's an actor. Mm. And I was talking to her, and she's like, I'll pick you up at the airport. Got it. Get the half cock. Half cock. So she's like, I'll pick you up at the airport. And I'm like, wow, I'm flying to Long Beach. She goes, I don't care. I'll drive down. So she drives from Hollywood to Long Beach. What's that, an hour? I don't know how far, but it's not close. Uh, All right. It's not great. So she drives down there, and I'm in in love with this woman. Yes. But I don't know how to... Handle anything. I'm yeah, stupid and I'm insecure. So she shows up and she's like dolled up, oh dress, boy, dress made up, hair done, and she's looking beautiful. And she's like, "Hey, I'm here to pick you up." Yeah. And now she's single. I'm single, but I'm still retarded. Ah. And so Derek is staying with a new girlfriend, not hot, and he's living with her. And I got to go meet her because he's working. So I got to go meet her to get the keys and get in. So I'm like, hey, so this girl, I go, can you come take me to meet 
my friend's girlfriend, and these are different kinds of women. The girl I'm friends with, she's like vegan and an actor mm -hmm. and uh, tattooed mm -hmm. and just uh, cares about things. And this girl is like a drinky party chick, a typical drunk girl. So we meet up, and they just hate each other. Instead of me going to this my friend's house to go make love and have a date day, I immediately meet up with my friend's girlfriend. They don't like each other. And I go, okay, I got to go to her house because she's got the keys. So I'll see you later. Thanks for the ride. Sure. And I think she was like heartbroken. Then later ah. on the week, I was like, should we meet up? She's like, ah, I got stuff to do. You're friends with that drunk idiot. Oh, you can't blame her. I mean, I, I, I know. hate to say it, but she got dolled up. But it's a tough line, ladies, because how do we know? You don't want to assume. You don't want to... You know, make a move if you don't like it. Uh, hey, I thought we were friends. You make a move on me. I just came down to hang out with you. You try to kiss me, you fucking weirdo. You're like, all right. But then if you don't try to kiss, hey, you don't make a move. I drove down. I got dolled up. You're like, I don't know. We can't say anything. It's all up in the ether. So, of course, it's going to get mixed up every now and then. It sucks, too, because I look like this asshole heartbreaker. Like, she was probably like, he broke my heart. I got all dolled well, up, no, and he didn't. No, you I didn't think do that. So. You I didn't think, do that. I think I came off that way, and I didn't mean to. I was just too insecure, and I was in love with this woman. Yes, well, that sucks. But also, well, I think we have this problem in our society with, with a lady guy thing where, lady guy guy, but you're, you're not allowed to, you can just not like someone also. Like, you know, sometimes you don't like a girl, and she's like, you don't like me, you fucking broke my heart. You're like, I don't like you. But I did like her. I know. I'm just saying. But right. it, it, there is that, too. Yes. Like, some people just don't like you. You don't get to, like, chew me out because I'm not sexually attracted to you. Yes. But that's a whole other bag of hammers. Yeah. It was tough. And then last one, this is a quicker one. There was once a woman that uh, it was at a show, and she, like, pulled me aside to, oh, like, boy. a side room, and, like, we made out. Oh, that's hot. And I was, like, into her, too. And then the next day, I didn't know how to handle these things. So I texted her. I was like, boy, you were drunk last night, huh? And she was like, no, I wasn't. And I was like, I was like, well, you were, you were acting crazy. And she was like, no, I knew what I was doing. And I was like, oh. And she's like, boy, you're making me feel really small right now. Ooh. And I didn't know how to recover. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, what? I should have been like, you know what? I fucked up. I don't know why I said that. I'm really into you. We should go out on a date. Right. But instead, I was like, oh, sorry. And I just did not handle ah! feelings and emotions and communication. Yeah. So I'm out here just breaking hearts, if you can believe it. Yeah, you're a heartbreak. And then I'm walking around going, I can't get laid. Nobody loves me. I'm lonely. And I would go break you know, car windshields and steel yes. shit because I was so frustrated with myself. Well, dudes, we had no one to talk to. We were clueless. You're a heart. I'm a fart breaker. I farted and ruined that whole relationship that I had. So yeah, we're, we were idiots. We're hanging out with knuckleheads all day doing headlocks and keg stands and then you get in front of a lady and it's all blurry. Ah, I fucked up so much. But then even my wife, the first time we were oh, together, I remember that. She was like, invited me to stay over and then she's like, do you want to watch a movie? We watched Nirvana Unplugged. I never made a move. We literally laid in bed and watched all of Nirvana <laughs> Unplugged. And the main thing is the fear of making a move, and they're like, oh, I don't see you that way. And you're like, ah. That's what it is. That's, that's what it is. That's the real situation. It's a tough, it's a tough, you got to do some real uh, detective work there. Now, now let, me, let me change anals here. And Please. I got to uh, tease something. Oh, I can't wait. So I don't know if I told <laughs> you, but, uh, you know, been hanging out with you. I've been trying to get you to rub off on me, give me a little herpy, whatever it is. Love to rub. Here's the rub, dry rub. So I Sick. took some of your advice, and I got to tell you, we've been doing 18 podcasts. We've been doing the road all day. We're doing clips. We're talking to Shelby. We're busy. Yes. It's we're a lot of work talking to Shelby. It is. We're swamped. Shelby's tough. So <laughs> the lady, my gal, speaking of lady, she's swamped, too. She's got nine podcasts. She's got eight friends, two tits, all this shit, and a cat. And I'm like... What are we doing? She's she's pulling her hair out every day. I'm on no sleep, stressed out every day, trying to do a pull up in the park like a psycho. And I was like, "Fuck it, Equinox. Fuck it. You went to Berlin. This weather, you know, it's actually not bad right now. But these cold days with the little rain spritz, it's enough. Oh, enough. These New York winters. Yes, it's all pipes. So I go. We're going to the beach. Yes. So I said, uh, get out your pocketbook, your crazy coos. <laughs> pocketbook. We're, we're looking up some dates. Get the Rolodex. Get the Daily Planner. Here we go. We picked a date. Spun the globe. <laughs> we're going right here. We're going to St. Thomas and the Virgin Islands. St. Thomas. Hyman. Thomas Dustin. I can't wait for this. I'm very excited. By the way, uh, you're, by the time you hear this, 
You've gone to St. Thomas, come back, and we've, we've been all over the world. We've broken up at this point. I know. We're recording about nine weeks ahead. I, I can't <laughs> wait to see the photos. I love a sand, beach, sky, palm, cocktails. I love those stupid cocktails that give you heartburn with the yellow yes, and the pineapple yes. and the blue straw. The, yeah, the, the umbrella in there yes. with the swirly straw. I can't wait to infuse myself with sugar and vodka and tequila. Get some swirlies. Eat her out from behind. Get yeah. her in the doggy style. Eat her pussy with yeah. her asshole in your nose. I want you to really live down there, damn Oh, it. we're going to live, baby. And uh, how about this? I'm in Omaha the weekend before, and I'm going oh. straight from Omaha to the island. So oh, it's, makes me want to jerk off. I love that. It couldn't be more different, and it couldn't be more like, okay, after Omaha, Kansas City, Oof. you know, I need a fucking uh, break, and I never do this. The flight out of Omaha, just to get to the Virgin Islands with a little bit of daylight left, is at 5.41 a.m. with a connection in Florida to then go to the Virgin So it's going to be a nightmare, but I land at 3 p.m., in the Verge, Woo. I'm going to grab a rental car and just keep it at the, the hotel and just zip around, go surfing, go snorkeling, go analing, whatever it is. Love a zip. Now, she meets you there or she's going to be in Omaha? She's going from Newark to there, so I'll see her fat ass there. Who gets there first? Her. Ah. So she can check in and jerk yes. off and please herself, and then I'll show up. God, this is exciting. I love this. I love a Island, Martin, yes. Scorsese, yes. I just McFly. I'm so happy. Can't wait. And uh, just uh, I've, I've been watching these YouTube videos about St. Thomas. Like, what do I do? And, and these YouTubes are so helpful. You get, but did, I, don't watch too much. That's Because then you feel like, I saw that in the video. I good saw point. this. You got to get it's It's such a balance. You want a good idea of what you're going to see without spoil. All right, no spoil. Remember I yelled at that guy in Arizona? I feel bad about that. What happened? We were in Phoenix, and uh, you, me, and Chesley, and one other guy, a comic, ah. went to a ghost town, a city oh, town. Oh, yes, yes. I kind of snapped, because we, everywhere we were walking, he read about it before. Right. He's like, I read that's not that great. I read this is pretty cool. I read yeah. that's not bad. And I went, yeah. I don't care what you read. I want to live my life. I felt bad. <laughs> I still feel guilty about it. I remember that. I remember that kid now. Yeah, you. Yeah, he was he, like a human trip advisor. Here's the yes. four stars. That's two. We're like, all right, all right. We get it. You read the fucking email. Plus, we're already here. Once you make the decision, all your notes don't help me. No. I'm about to see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm about to have my own opinion. And it's a bit of a downer. This place isn't great. Like, well, let me decide. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Well, I feel bad. Now I feel justified. Fuck him. <laughs> I w- these are the things I wake up being like, why was I such an asshole to that guy? Yeah, you'll uh, you'll have a snap every now and then. Nah, snap, I like crackle, snap. pop. But uh, either way, Virgin, by the time you see me next, I'll have a tan. I'll be uh, on the island, man. I'll have a coconut drink and a, and a grass skirt and an STD. I can't wait. You're one of those guys that's always tan, though. You never. I got the olive. Yeah, that's nice. That's but big. The uh, Sicilian side. Yeah, people really pay for that. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. These tanning places all over town. I'm like. I guess it is winter, but I'm like, the sun is free. Yeah, it's strange. It's very strange. Sun is good. Sun. I haven't seen mine. But, uh, yeah, can't wait. Looking forward to it. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesdays for Stories is excited to welcome our new sponsor, Indochino. You got to love them. Finding something you look good in can be tough, but sometimes all it takes is one little design detail to make an outfit your look. Got to make it your own. This year, let Indochino take care of your 2022 style edit. You can customize everything from suits and shirts to chinos, bomber jackets, at prices more affordable than you might expect. I looked on their website. This is pro stuff. I mean, this is top of the line sexy dude wear. I mean, this stuff is great, and you pick it all out, every detail, the cut, the 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 length, the Ooh. width, all that stuff, the look. The vibe. Indochino offers completely custom fitted suits, shirts, casual and more surprisingly affordable prices. Every piece is made to your exact measurement, and you can customize every detail all online. Choose everything about your suit, including the fabric, lapel, monogram, and statement linings. Come on, you know these guys are the real deal. You can create a suit that fits you and your style perfectly. The best part is Indochino's suits start from just four hundred and twenty nine and shirts from seventy nine with all customizations included. Wow, that's huge. Give yourself a style edit that sets the tone for the rest of the year with Indochino. Get fifty dollars off any purchase of three hundred and ninety nine dollars or more by using promo code Tuesdays at Indochino.com. That's fifty 50- 
dollars off a purchase of three ninety nine or more at i n d o c h i n o dot com promo code Tuesdays. Hell yeah! All right, Tuesdays with stories is sponsored by Endeavor Athletic. It's the future. So why is your workout wardrobe still your old smelly college sweatshirt and basketball shorts with no drawstring? Don't let ill-fitting athletic gear get in the way of you being your best on the field, in the gym, or wherever you exercise. Endeavor Small Batch Craft Athletic Apparel is made to move with you. They sent me some pants. They sent me some hoodies. They fit like a glove. They're snug, but they're still stretchable. They don't fall down. They don't sag. This is good stuff, high-end stuff, and it makes you want to work out. That's how good this stuff feels. You want to get up and get active. The crew neck sweatshirt they sent is made of NASA space certified technology worn by the Trizar crew. The print on the inside is made of the same material that is on the outside of spaceships designed to reflect heat from the craft as it flies through the atmosphere. So by putting the print on the inside, it reflects heat back to your body to keep you warm. Great for running, cycling, yoga, lifting, and everything else that makes you sweaty. With years of research and performance testing behind each design, every garment Endeavor makes is guaranteed to exceed all performance expectations. As a Tuesdays with Stories listener, you can save 15% off at checkout using code TUESDAYS at EndeavorAthletic.com. That's E-N-D-E-A-V-O-R Athletic.com, promo code TUESDAYS, for 15% off at checkout. Endeavor, you don't give up when the reps get hard and your performance gear shouldn't either. Hell yeah. Now, I feel like we got to go into last night. We got to talk last night. By the way, did you love Ali G when it was on? No, I didn't love it. Interesting. I love Borat, the first one. Yeah. But Ali G, I got a think I, I think I got a problem with Wiggers. <laughs> White folks. I like black people. Their mind. This is how I look at it. It's like I love carrots. I hate carrot cake. I like black people. I don't like Wiggers. Yeah, but it's a character. Yeah, yeah. He's not I, really I, that. I let him slide on that, but just the uh, the idea of it, I'm like, ah, right. The, the, Yo, what's up, but uh, I just can't do it. But that's what's so funny. He's making fun of the guys you hate. I know, but it's still there a little. I see. I got you. It's like if a guy's doing gay porn, ironically, there's still a dick going in an ass. And I'm like, I get it. It's a joke, but it's still happening. That was between us. but um, <laughs> Another was between us. But um, he had some killer no, jokes, though. He's, he's interviewing Buzz Aldrin, <laughs> and he's like, what is it like to be the first man on the sun? And uh, then he's like, it's too hot to go on the sun. He goes, what about the winter when the sun is cold? <laughs> and that's that's gold. That's gold. Don't get me wrong. Very good. All right, got to talk about last night, because we have one of these things where we each have our perspective and it it clinches together we and separates yes yes so uh, give me your because yours is much more interesting so let's I, take me through it so i did a i did a couple pods that day where we drank me and sam got pretty sloppy with sal volcano and chris d so we're just putting them back and it's a couple hours long and we got deep and so you're like it's like four o'clock five o'clock six o'clock and Rock. we're yeah, we're hammered, and uh, then we go, oh, we got to do Ari's show. Ari, you've heard of him, Big Ugly Jew. Huge he cock. sold out the Gramercy Theater with a surprise lineup. Whoa. So, sells out in two seconds. It's a, it's a storytelling show, whatever. No one knows who's going to be there. All these big, big, fun people show up. It's a good time, and we get drunk. So now Chris D is on the show, Sam is on the show, I'm on the show, and Sal goes, well, I'll go with you. Nice. So Sal shows up, and it's just one of those great nights in New York where you're like, this theater's sold out, we're half in the bag, there's a briskness in the air, we're out with all our pals, this is fucking amazing. Pal Volcano. Yes, pal! PayPal. So uh, we're just like, oh my god, then I'm getting texts from the stand. Where are you? You're on next. I'm like, oh shit. So I, this is the beauty of the, the stand, is it's on Union Square. Gramercy's on 23rd. I can run there. That's nine blocks. Seven blocks. Seven! 16th to 23rd, right? Seven. You're right. So I just run straight down 3rd Avenue, do the spot, run back. They throw Sal on to kill time. I bump into you and Soder on the way there. You guys make fun of me. It's a great night. I'm out of breath. Run on, do the stand. Hirschberg up to the uh, to the to the Gramercy. Sal's on, killing. They throw me up. 
fun show. I, I riffed a story out of my ass. I barely knew it. It was okay. And then I go, all right, let's get your ass up here. He comes up. Then we get Shane Gillis out there. He's doing the Trump, and uh, we're zigging and zanging. Sal goes into the crowd like Donahue. What? He's taking questions. Oh, I missed the Donahue. It was wild. We high five. We chug some whiskey, and then I go back to the stand, wrap that up, and then I go to the cellar for a late spot. Saw Gulbin, saw Tony Woods, saw Andy Haynes. Great time. Anyone fun? <laughs> Uh, Tony Woods was all right, but it's funny. Show. Every time I see him, he's like, hey, you, you're there. I'm like, yeah, we've met 600 times. Yeah, he's one of those. I'm doing a Ruba with him, and I just feel like every night I'm going to be like, Joe List, the guy yes. from last night. Yes, yes. Yeah, he's older. He likes to drink. Sure. I'm, I'm not mad at him. There's plenty of guys, a bunch of guys in comedy that you have to be like, remember, I've known I know. you for like 28 years. We met in 1994. I know. I feel like that was some bookers. I'm like, you know, you booked me before. They're like, yeah, you can send me the tape. I'm like, all right. <laughs> but uh, unless you're, you're well, that uh, was a real condensed version. Sorry, there. that was a lot of fast. I packed it in. I thought we were gonna really stretch this and pull this, <laughs> stretch and pull like a nutsack. But you go, you go. Right. I, I maybe I, I gave a big nugget. Yeah, I want to dive into some detail because if my version is longer than your version, I'm gonna look like a, a dweeb over here. Well, I gave the overlay. Now okay. you come in there with the. I'll underpay. Nitty gritty. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm at the stand. First, I'm at the stand. I open for Bobby. K- I, sometimes, see, you're taking from me. I got to take from you because I have such time issues. You got time issues. I'm always like, no, I got to get there nine hours early so I'm not stressed. I did Bobby Kelly's podcast. Then I go, we hang out at the olive tree. Classic hang. It's me and Bobby eating wings, Liz. And uh, by the way, between you and me and the lamppost. I was doing Bobby's Pod with Justin Silver, me, Justin Silver, and Bobby. Mm-hmm. And Liz calls. Oh boy! And they're like, and calls Bobby you? calls Bobby, okay. so he puts her on the air. He puts he answers the phone. He puts everyone on the air. He puts everybody on the air. I don't know if that's legal. He loves it. Yeah. So he says, "Hey, fuck Mary Kell, me, Justin, and and me." I can't even get the <laughs> sentence out. Oh, he did that to her. He did it to her. Ooh, so right away, spicy. you know me, I got feelings, and I go, "Jeez," I'm like sitting there, I'm bashful, I'm turning all. What's that Ooh. when you're red? Uh, Blushing. Blush. I'm blushed. Yes. And she goes, well, I got to marry Bobby. He's my best bud. You know, we're compatible. So now I got my fingers crossed, and I'm like, I got my legs crossed, trying to hold down a boner. And Silver's, a, he's a ripped little Jewish guy. He's got a cool hair. He's got tattoos. Yeah, no. So I'm like, and she's going, uh, and I'm like, come on, please. I have so little. I just, I'm, I've been married for ten years. I'm gay. I, I could have fucked the woman in in Long Beach, in Charleston. You blew it. I was like, please, for the love of God. And she goes, I guess I'd fuck. Joe, because oh. he's funny, and I'm like, oh my god, oh. I flipped, I oh, fell man. out of my chair, I've never gotten the fucking fuck, Mary kill, I mean, I've done fuck, Mary kill, Himmler and Hitler, and I was kill, I was, uh, somebody <laughs> played it with me, and, and uh, you know, Magic Johnson and wow. Will Chamberlain, I was kill. Wow, they fucked Johnson over you, they got AIDS. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm saying, wow. so, I mean, I've never won the fuck, and, and she said fuck, and you have to act like you're cool, I mean, you can see the video, I'm like this, oh, neat, fun. Yes. And in my, in my mind, I'm like... Because when the thing about fuck Mary Kill, it it puts your head there. Of course, but good for you for what I mean. Look, look Silver is a sweet guy, but if he died, no one would notice. Yeah, he stinks. So I'm going. Oh my god! And it's probably ironic because he's so hot. And she feels right. weird saying it. He's right. hot and single, so you pick the guy who's married. But still, it really did a number on me. But I felt like Costanza. With Elaine, with the video, where she does the yes. audio, the sexy. Because then I go downstairs, and she's in there, and I'm like, hey. <laughs> and it's just the two of it. It hasn't opened yet. So I'm like, how's it going, Liz? Oh. Uh, I'll be over here writing. Yeah, we could fuck. And then, uh, so they were all hanging out, the three of us, and then she referenced it. Oh, I made some joke, up. and she's like, that's why I'd fuck Liz. And I'm like, are you kidding me? What's going on here? I'm dumping water on my head in oh. front of her. I, 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 I took my steak and smacked myself in the face with it. Ooh, give me a towel. I got to sit on it. I mean, it's, uh, I'm, I'm shitting my pants here, so oh, I think boy. I have a chance. I might get divorced. All right, well, you'll get some spots, and so will she on her <laughs> vagina. But uh, either way, that's exciting. So Ooh. that was a thrill. Anyways, Big I hang out over there. But Big then thrill. Bobby goes. Is it hot there? Bobby goes, hey, 7 p.m. I'm at the fat plaque. Why don't you open? Liz goes, just open for him. We need someone that I'd fuck on there. Sure. And I go, well, I can't do. Oh, my God. Time flies when you're. Uh, Making shit up. <laughs> the mask is so stupid. I know. It's ridiculous. There's all this evidence that they do nothing. It's ending this week. I can't believe it. It's fine. But anyway, so uh, where am I again? Oh, you fucked, you fucked Liz in the cellar in the basement. 
A dream. So I, I, I bet that, she's an animal in the sack, too. I bet she'll really break you in half. Well, you know me. I'm dying for someone to shove a shoe in my ass oh, and spit yeah. cum in my face. She's the I, one for that. <laughs> she'll hit you with a hot poker and a, and a baseball bat. If we were there, I'd start by being like, i got to cancel my spot. That's how I would start it. And then she starts smacking oh. me and putting a heel in my pee hole. Oh, baby doll. <laughs> this is getting good, huh? I hope she never hears this. <laughs> I, can't, I, I mean, I don't think she should enjoy no, any of Oh, she doesn't know how to use a pod. <laughs> <laughs> she's 68. But, uh, yeah, that's exciting. Good for you. She's a fun lady. She's got some power, too. You, you're getting seduced by I, her uh, her power. I know. I want to be a soft bottom to a power top. Yeah, well, you're softy. So, uh, any jizz. So, let me get to the point of the story. I'll get right to it. <laughs> <laughs> So they go, hey, open for Bobby at 7. I go, I can't. This is where I need some Norman in my ass. I go, Please. I can't. I'm at the stand. And I don't like to tell the time because they always go, well, what time? They always do that. And I go, but just, I don't I don't like to rush. I hate to rush. But the, the thrill, Jerry. Don't you feel a thrill? Like, oh, shit, the wind is in your hair. You're running into the stand. It's exciting. No thrill. Hate the thrill. All right. Will the thrill. The thrill is gone. So I said... I go, I can't. I'm at the stand. They go, what time? I go, 7.30. They go, you're going at 7. Do 10 minutes, 7.10. That, that is 20 tight. 20 minutes. That is tight. Thank you. But they go, just do it, you fucking pussy. So finally I go, all right, I'll do it. But we have to start right at 7. Yes, that's fair. So then we do the, sta- the fat black, start right at 7. I do 10. I come off. I get a lift. Takes two minutes for the lift to arrive. That puts me at 7.12. It's a nine-minute car ride. That's, what is that? 7.21. <laughs> 7.21. Yeah, but it was later than that. I ended up getting there at 7.27. Okay. I text Joe Herrera. I go, I'll be there in three minutes. He goes, no problem. I walk in at 7.27. Spots at 7.30. I had three minutes to walk in. Plenty Worked out fine. You're early, technically. Worked out fine. So I'm, I'll try to squeeze in some more spots. To- yeah. Then I got three at the stand. But when you made it, weren't you happy you did it? Happy I there did it. There we Very go. happy. That's of course, I lost money. About. Bobby didn't pay me for the fat black. It cost $12 for the lift, so I lost Whoa, whoa. Money. He's got a Venmo year, fat ass. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, there's a Venmo coming. You hear that, Bobo? And plus, this guy's about to fuck the manager, so you might want to get on his good side. <laughs> he hasn't mentioned it. <laughs> well, he could, he could throw you a 20. Well, we'll see. So, any jizz. So, then I have three spots at the stand, and you know, you know me. I know you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm you looking know me. at the lineup. It's like Mark Norman, 745, Mark Norman, 830, Mark Norman, 945. And the host goes, You seen Mark? Yeah, and I go, I got some news for you, Pally. Between you and the lamppost, he ain't coming to that uh, spot. Was it upstairs? Upstairs. Yeah, that'll do it. I go, He ain't showing up for that. Because I know you, and, and I know the lineup, even though it's a secret lineup. I, right. got, I got moles all over the town. Yeah, yeah, so does my wife. So I know the lineup, and I'm like, He ain't leaving that hang for this horse shit. I'll tell you that right well, now. Well, I, I would like to, but it ain't, it ain't going to happen. It was I, just too hard to pull. Mathematically, I'm like, 745, 845, 945, 8 p.m. show plus the hang. Yeah. So, uh, you know. I heard it wasn't a great one either. wasn't great. So okay. I started whispering to all the comics. I go, hey, be near the door because you're going to get that Norman spot. Hey, you're welcome there, whippersnapper. And all the young comics go, what do you think we're doing here? We know. Oh. Everybody knows. I like that. So I go down. I do my spot. Killer. I do another spot. Good. And then so- I bump into Soder, and he goes, hey, I'm going over to the Gramercy in between to see all the boys. Yes, come on by. We'd love to have you. Now, this is where I'm a real... Puss, because I'm like, I don't know, can we go over there? Do we have passes? Are we going to be able to get back there? They are pretty strict over there. I was like, are we invited? It's a theater. I I, I can't go over there and not be able to get in. No. I would shoot myself. That hurts. At being like this, I'm friends with Ari. I, I, that's, there's Mark. I, I'm Mark. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's I can see his nose. You know, you don't want that. Right. So I go, you go. I'm not going to go. And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, it's all of our best friends. Let's just go over there. And they don't know that at the box office. Thank you. Yeah. You're a good friend. I mean, what is that Wayne's World? Hey, my girlfriend's in. A lot of people's girlfriends are in there. You know? Like, who, who the fuck are we? Well, Soda's like, I'm on the list. And I'm oh. like, but do you have a plus one? And he's like, I think so. It's like that kind of thing. So I go, you know what? Fuck it. I'll go over there. This is just my ego. If they don't let me in, I'll go, eh, what can you do? I'll walk back. You know what's funny, though? If it says I'm on the, it says Dan Soder on the list, but you can be like, well, it says list. On you know this is the the, the guest list. There's your last name. Yeah. That's a little flimsy. Yeah, it's not great. Well, your name is technically on the paper. That's true. That's all I'm saying. And there's probably a Joe on there somewhere. Aha! Uh-huh, you combine. Yeah, I go hey, there's Joe and there's List. All right, I'm reaching, but uh, you know Jack Reacher. I like a reach. Well, Around. anyway, so we walk over there. That's when we bump into you. Yes, which was fun. And I go, you better get over there because I've already given you spot to recede. 
<laughs> and we laugh and we go, Good boy, he's nuts. Oh, that's crazy. We get over there and uh, we end up getting in. And they were pretty lax, actually. Soder got his sticker. And by the way, Soder, love the guy. He flew the coop right away. Really? He gets his sticker. He puts it on. He goes, I'll go talk to Ari. He's just gone like a thief in the night. And I go, what the fuck is that? We showed up together. You bail on me? Let me. He's like, don't worry. I'll find Ari. I'll come back for you. So I'm like, all right. And then, by the way, the lady was like, yeah, you're friends with him? I'm like, yeah. She's like, yeah, there you go. It gives me the sticker. I could have been a shooter, a school shooter. Yeah, right? I got the vibe. But anyways, I got my sticker, went back there and saw, yeah, like you said, Tim Dillon. Did we even mention him? He was there. Tim was a big guy. I mean, the pop he got. Ah! I mean, just at Alec Baldwin's podcast, he shot a lady. What a hang, though. Tim Dillon, all, all whites. but uh, Well, that's what you can get with a secret. Tim Dillon, Ari Shafir, Sam Marill, yourself. Gillis, yeah. Great hang, and then walk back over. Me, Sam, and Soder walked back to the stand for the next spot. That was great. Soder got bumped. He was pissed. Ooh-wee. And uh, just a great, great night. Beautiful. Great night. Comedy in New York. It's it's happening. It's hopping. It's 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 a rush, and it's it's crackling. You know, where you can mm. feel there's, a, there's an electricity. Crackle, crackle. Yeah, there you go. Cracker. But uh, yeah, so come see us. The, the The new stuff is cooking. You got a, you got a special coming out maybe in two <laughs> years. Who knows? If April. Gets, April. We got a we got a month. For the love of tits, subscribe to my YouTube. I gotta I gotta get my. Th- I'm trying to put YouTube shorts and YouTube knickers and YouTube well, you're socks. Sh- YouTube shorts. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying it's every. All pipes! I'm trying everything. Get over there and subscribe. Get this on. Is the it. most fun Shelby's ever had in his life. I know. He's got the the boombox or whatever. I mean, he's had 28 birthday parties that failed to reach this level of joy. Well, let's be honest. Where there's more people here than at his last birthday. But either way, you got to have fun in life, folks. You got to do the drops. You got to come see us live. He hit six million on YouTube. Not subscribers. Subscribe. Get on it. Where are you going to be there, Fanny? I'm going to be in Boston. Now, this is very important to me. Patriots Day weekend, April. 13, 14, 15, no, 14, 15, 16, and if I don't sell here, oh, yeah. I legally have to hang myself in Faneuil Hall because... Well, pulling Epstein. This is... <laughs> it's over if you uh, don't sell this. This is my hometown, big holiday weekend, and uh, my God almighty, the, the, the special will come out right before that, so please, Boston, show up, for Christ's I, sake. Who's pumping out more material than this queef? You got a special coming out, you're probably already, when that comes out, you'll have a new half hour. I got a new half, at least. Woo! So, so come out, and then Buffalo the week after that with Matt Wayne. Everybody, oh, you want to see Matt Wayne? Local boy. And uh, we got tons of merch. Patreon, get on. I got other stuff coming up, too. Uh, Austin, San Francisco, Vancouver dates made up. That's June 11th. So I'm going from San Fran to Vancouver. My agent's so good at routing. I love a route. And uh, Atlanta in June. First time working in Atlanta. Oh, that'll fill up. Uh, that's June 24, 25, I think. What Nashville in August. Ooh, Zanies. Finally, Nashville yeah. Zanies. Love Zanies. What, what about the live app? Live app is March 21st. Second? Second. March 22nd. Uh, Fat Black Pussycat, ComedyCellar.com. Hopefully, my lady friend Liz yeah. just put that on the website. <laughs> fuck that into her? We should have her as a guest. She can come smack Ooh, me around a little bit. You that's know, a great idea. Pull my hair. Let's do it. Yeah, so uh, come out to all those things. Subscribe to the YouTube, the Patreon. Subscribe to our YouTube, too. We're kicking ass over there. Hell yeah, yeah. YouTube's kicking up more clips, more fun, more uh, good stuff for the Patreons cooking. I'll be all over the place. MarkNormanComedy.com. And uh, I'm in Raleigh. I mean, uh, this summer is going to be bananas. Chicago at the Vic. Oh, hi, Mark. All kinds of cool stuff. I, I don't know when this comes out, so I'm scared to throw out a bunch of dates, but Indianapolis is in there. Hold on, I got Oh, it. this comes out on the 23rd? 23rd. Okay. So, yeah, Fort Wayne. 22nd, February 22nd. I'm doing Utah again, wise guys. Oh, this is the big episode everyone's been talking about. It's Tuesday. Huh? It's 2-2-2-2-2. Two, 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 oh, two. there Everybody's you go. Been Everybody's been messaging us. So that's why it's special. We got the sound yes. drops because it's 222222. 222. 227. Uh, Louisville Comedy Club, Dania <laughs> Improv, <laughs> Indianapolis, Lincoln Theater in D.C., Phoenix, uh, Stand Up Live, Magoobies, Addison Improv, Back to Dallas, San Jose, uh, Huntsville, Alabama. That'll be tough. San Jose. Gay. Yeah. <laughs> Irvine Improv. So we got a lot of fun stuff. Check it out. Give them hell. Praise Allah. Wow.